it's a call to step up and, and get back into your relationship and repent from your sinful ways and get back straight with the Lord because we all know by his word that he says he forgives us all. That's true. All we got to do is ask it. Well, I've never really thought of it that way as far as when you're down and out and, and depressed that the devil's laughing at you right then because you're actually separating yourself out from God when you're supposed to be, uh, like it says in the Bible, be joyful always. Yep. And, and shine. And shine for him. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, talking about awesome, your mission statement that got off of your site mm-hmm. was... The Spirit of God, the Master, is on me because God anointed me. He sent me to preach the good news to the poor, heal the heartbroken, announce freedom to all captives, pardon all prisoners. God sent me to announce the year of His grace, a celebration of God's destruction on our enemies, and to comfort all who mourn, to care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion, Give them bouquets of roses instead of ashes, messages of joys instead of news of doom. Now, with that mission statement in mind, Paul, Mm -hmm. over the time that y'all had this band and your music that's been out there, is there a time that, you know, fans come up to you and said, I really appreciate your music because of this, because of a song, something that you've said. I take it as a serious blessing that we get from people that listen to us, which it's kind of a wide variety. Like, there's some, like, really young kids up to some kind of really older people. Right. The one common thing that is, is definitely a blessing for me is that I hear people tell me, I love this kind of music in the secular sense. That they know that God doesn't like that message. And the thing that they give us props for is bringing God into it so that now they don't have to feel ashamed to listen to that style of music because of the message. Now they can put it in, listen to it, and say, you know what, God's good with this because this is about Him. Yeah. That's probably been the one biggest compliment that we've gotten from people is is the fact that, like I said, you know, I mean, a lot of people listen to to Slayer and Slipknot and stuff like that that listen to us, and it kind of gives them a, a bridge to get away from the negative message and come in and have a positive message. Absolutely. I myself can appreciate what you said because since Brandon has led me on to this kind of music, I myself have not really looked back at, I would say, the secular realm. I might yep. listen to it a little bit every now and then, but you know what? I listened to In This Blood probably about three times today <laughs> doing the dishes Amen. <laughs> it was a lot of dishes <laughs> so i can definitely appreciate that <laughs> and the awesome. and the messages you have behind these songs man amen thank you brother yes all the praise be to god for that okay i want to step back now you said about your testimony now you've been in several bands before in this blood but there, there was a time that you were with a band called Obvious, and then you quit for about a year, and then you picked back up yep. within this blood. And can you kind of tell why you stopped from Obvious, which was a Christian band, and stepped out of it for a year, and then got back into a Christian band? Obvious was a, a group that I got into uh, shortly after I got saved. Almost like Guns N' Roses with, a, with some hip-hop thrown in. <laughs> we were a group of very diverse musicians together from one church. I played bass in that band, and obviously I come from a heavy metal rock kind of background. And then we had a singer who came from a country folk kind of background. Then the drummer was kind of like classic rock, into Rush, that kind of stuff. Then the other guitar player, he was more of like a blues, ZZ Top kind of player than we had had the brother who he did some some rhymes and stuff and uh he was big time in the uh, holy hip-hop and gospel uh-huh. the lord put on us gave us the ways to get out to play for people that were in recovery that's basically what we did was we played a couple shows that weren't recovery but for the most part a lot of the stuff we did was recovery what a blessing it was it was a beautiful thing again i, I was only saved for a short time by the time 
I had gotten with these brothers maybe six months, something like that. Just as every Christian, when they get saved, you're on fire for a long time, and then because of this, because of that, because of life itself, you start to to fizzle a little bit. Right. Well, I ended up fizzling a lot. I wasn't living right on the out, and I, I knew that Scripture had spoken of that you can't be involved in ministry if you're living that way. For me, to not go against God, and even more so than I already had, and these brothers that I was in the band with, I decided to step out and leave because, I, like I said, I wasn't living right, and I had no business being involved with it anymore. So I had left. Maybe about eight months later, we got back together. I was back with them for a bit. The band had played itself to as far as I could go, basically, at that point. I, I wasn't failing it anymore, so I kind of left. I was you know, I was almost completely done with music at this point. I think they kept on for a few months after that, and then it kind of fizzled for them as well. I kind of just sat at home, played my guitar to myself and that kind of stuff. Well, I, I took my digital recorder, and I recorded a couple songs. And it was really basic stuff. I used a drum machine, everything like that, and put it up on the page. Like, Better Suffering was one of the songs. I had a kid call me who actually was J.I. bass player who I'd known previously. He was like, oh, wow, I want to get involved with what you're doing. That's really cool stuff you're doing. A couple weeks later, um, I got a, another email from another brother that I knew that was like, plays guitar, and he wanted in on it. The next thing I knew, I got another email, and it was Ted the drummer who was asking if we still needed a drummer. So basically, that's how we morphed into In His Blood. Actually, right now, there's only three of us. Colin left, bass player left. And now it's just me and Ted, and we got a new singer, a kid named Rod. That's basically the gist of the transition from there to there. Okay. Well, when I read about Obvious and how you stepped out for a time, I think that's huge to be able to step out and realize that you're not right. And instead of pretending to be something that you're that you're not at that particular time, is that you took some time off to get in depth with yourself and get back right because some people might not do that and end in a blaze just burn out yep. so yep. i think it, that's why i asked that question because i think that is just awesome that you took some time off to delve into yourself and back into a relationship with jesus then get back into a band and man i'm glad you did because i love in this blood <laughs> so <laughs> thinking about that we need to play another song so let's play all hail h-a-i-l and we'll be right back Wow. 
All Hail, a song that talks about, if you listen to the, to the words in the, in the verses, talks about how kind of rotten and evil this world can be. Eventually, one day, everybody is going to kneel down and they're going to bow to Jesus Christ. There's no two ways about it, whether you're saved or you're not saved. Either way, you're going to bow, and that's basically what that song is about. Hopefully a wake-up call for some people to realize exactly what the problems are in this world and the answer of how they can be solved. This world is a crazy place. Every day I think about the scriptures that talk about how towards the end times, how things are going to be, how people are going to be lovers of money, they're going to be lovers of themselves, they're only going to care for themselves. You know, like Scripture says, it's it's going to be father against son, mother against daughter-in-law, all that kind of stuff. And just like, I mean, I know it's going to get a lot worse than it is now, but I just see it on the horizon. Mm-hmm. It's like right there. And when they say the day is here, the day is here, no question. And it's time for people to realize you already have a relationship. Amen. Build it. Strengthen it. Make right. it better. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, now's the time you better really start thinking because when that horn blows... And he comes a riding through them clouds, you ain't gonna have a chance to say I'm sorry. You ain't gonna have a chance to, to ask for forgiveness because the time is, is there already. And it's gonna be right there. And we're getting close and these are the warning signs and people need to pick up on that. Basically that's where where all hail came from. We actually got handpicked, which I think this is really awesome. This is so cool for us. We got handpicked to be on there's an Aussie Osborne biography coming out from Rockstar Books, I believe it was. We got handpicked to be on a CD that comes with it with bands that are influenced by Ozzy. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to Ozzy and Black Sabbath, and uh, again, the band, we use our old musical influences in the sense of the style of music, Mm -hmm. not the message, but for us to get a chance to be on national distribution with this song for people to hear to be probably with a bunch of other bands who want anything like us, who don't have anything close to a message like we do, I think is huge, and it's a huge blessing for us to be involved with that. Amen, brother. That reminds me of something. It was either on the radio this week or last week about your message in this song, is that they said, he was talking about talking to an atheist. He said, I understand, he said, the thing is, if there is no heaven and I die, so what? But if I'm right and you die, eternal fire. Eternal fire. So that was some heavy, heavy stuff, and I thought about that when I was listening to the song also. So awesome. Well, now is the time, Paul, is when I don't ask the question. You can say whatever is on your heart, whatever is on on your mind, whatever you want to say to the Hammerheads and the In His Blood fans. All right. Well, first, I just want to say what a blessing it was to be able to be involved with the show tonight. It's a great show, no question. We need to support each other. It's a hard genre to be involved in. You know, we're from up north around Boston. I'm going to go ahead and say that there might be one other Christian hardcore metal band that's in our area, period. Mm. And so, like, all the bands we play with, they're all secular, and it's not easy. So if you guys, wherever you are, if you have a Christian band coming, you guys need to go support them at their shows. You guys need to go be there because that's what it's all about. We're supposed to support each other. We're supposed to be there for each other. To get out, get the message. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to help. God has a plan for everybody. You follow the flow, that's all I'm asking. And if there's anything else that I could say to anybody is is that if your relationship with the Lord is dampened, it's not good, you really need to sit back and take the time to get it fixed. You need to get into your Bible, you need to get into prayer, you need to talk to your pastor, you need to talk to your Christian friends. Don't let yourself get caught up and pulled away because you 